comfortable sharing. And if you're uncomfortable with uh, being on video or having your name uh, visible, uh, feel free to change it however you need it or turn your account and also turn your camera off. All right, with that being said, thank you so much everyone for joining us tonight for getting involved in 2022 with Blue Bonnet. Um, first, before we jump into things, a little introduction from our team. Uh, we've got Becca Blaze, our executive director, myself, comms director, uh, Derek and Cassandra, our programs co-directors, and finally, Mayor Ahmed, our operations manager. So we're super excited to have all of y'all. We also have our wonderful guests, uh, Santiago from Arena, Ariana from Coding It Forward, and Josue from DigiDems. So we are super excited uh, to be having our wonderful guests and excited to hear what they've got in store for us. With that being said, today we will be covering why 2022 is so important, how to get involved at Blue Bonnet, a little recap of what happened at our State of the Blue Union, and finally our partner highlights. And we do have a little survey for all of y'all so we can learn how to become better with you. So uh, with that being said, Derek. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, so 2022 is going to be a very consequential year and also a year with a ton of opportunity. So we're facing an intense fight for control of the House and Senate and progressive issues are at stake from reproductive rights and access to healthcare to voting rights and gerrymandering. So it's gonna be really all hands on deck and our early investments in data and data professionals are critical to supporting that impact, especially on down ballot campaigns. The Blue Bonnet team, including my new staff members like myself, are beyond excited to help our fellows develop skills and make an impact. Uh, projects like mapping newly redrawn districts uh, after redistricting to help, help our can uh, candidates strategic plans, building data infrastructure in preparation for November, and overall finding creative solutions to tough problems are just a few of the things I'm super excited about to see our fellows bring to the community. So with that being said, I'm going to hand it off to Mayor to talk about ways to get involved in Blue Bonnet. Hi everyone, I'm Mayor and I'm excited to let you know what we've been doing and a lot more about our community building efforts here at Blue Bonnet. Um, for one, our fellowship application is open. So if you'd like to be part of a data team, um, the January cohort will be starting soon and applications are due January 3rd. Another way to be involved is to become a member, which is a great opportunity to um, meet with other fellows and kind of guide them, help each other out. And our fellowship program requires about an hour to three hours a week. Um, another way to get involved is to host a meetup in your area. We just hosted one last week in DC. The entire staff was on a retreat there. Um, and it was a great way to connect with people in the area. Um, another way you can use your creative skills is to either write or illustrate a blog. Um, and uh, submit a project you've been proud of and guide other fellows to do the same. We're actually hosting a hackathon this spring. So that would be another way to get involved. Um, be sure to spread the word about the data fellowship and um, give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram. We've been quite active there. Christina has been um, putting out some great stuff. And we also have a quarterly newsletter um, which will keep you updated on all things happening at Blue Bonnet, updates. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I'll pass it over to Cassandra. Hi y'all, I'm Cassandra. I'm one of the program co-directors and I just joined the team about a month and a half ago. Last week we hosted our State of the Blue Union and here's a short recap from it. Um, we did a lot of things in 2021, including growing the team from two people to six with me being the last hire brought on board. For the most recent one, if we want to look at it that way, we place data teams in 77 campaigns, nonprofits, and other progressive organizations, which brings us to nearly 900 fellows recruited, trained, and organized. And our fellows have helped more than 500 campaigns and organizations with their data and tech talent. And we've worked in 42 states and county. Now we're going to hear from our partners, starting with Santiago from Marina, then Ariana from Putting It Forward, and then um, Josue from Digitem. So Santiago, passing it over to you. 
Thank you, Cassandra. Uh, my name is Santiago Martinez, partner at ARENA, and um, our focus and our mission is to train staff and support staff. Um, and so we do that through a handful of programs. And so the two highlighted to your left um, are two upcoming um, opportunities. One is called Tech to Elections, uh, which is Campaigns 101 for tech workers. So if you have a background in um, the tech industry, um, we're building that, uh, that training to help show people how to uh, take those skills and translate them to the campaign work. And so very applicable to a lot of the work that Blue Bonnet does. Um, and so we will be kind of giving a broad overview of the campaign ecosystem um, and then doing a little bit of a deep dive into skills like SQL, R, Python, and showing what the practical application is for those skills um, in the campaign space and at what level that those usually show up. So uh, whether it is at um, you know the state house level or congressional or um, presidential level campaigns or partner you know outside organizations talking about here's how you can actually take those skills, get involved, whether you want to be a volunteer or transition into a full time role. Um, and then our signature program is Arena Academy. Um, this includes seven different tracks um, which train. Uh, essentially every single um, leadership uh, team member that might find that you might find on a traditional campaign. And so campaign managers, finance directors, organizing directors, comms, um, digital organizing directors, organizers, and data. And so the data track, I think, is most applicable to you all um, and is our sort of um, is our way of being able to train staffers on how to become data directors on campaigns or data support staff on campaigns, um, teaching the fundamentals of here's what from onboarding all the way to election day, what it looks like to be able to um, support a campaign with your data expertise and also build up those data skills. And so it gets a very, very hands-on in terms of how do you use things like SQL um, and we use uh, a, a Google BigQuery database that we've built up um, to be able to give people hands-on um, experience using uh, technical skills, connecting those queries from BigQuery over to Google Studio, uh, creating reports. And the capstone of Arena Academy is a 24-hour campaign simulation where you're put into teams with members of other tracks um, in order to build a campaign plan in 24 hours. So you're given real data, you are given uh, a fictitious candidate and you have 24 hours to build this plan. And so uh, Arena Academy is a really dynamic event. Um, it's an opportunity to not only learn the data skills that you need, but also get some exposure to uh, management training from the management center. We also do unconscious bias. And so really trying to round out the experience then and preparation for future campaign staff um, and specifically data staff, which is uh, what I'm always most interested in, and I run the data track at Arena. Um, and so those two trainings um, have a pretty pretty close deadline that's coming up January 4th. Um, there's an early decision deadline for both of those, which is tonight. So if you're really ambitious, you can apply for it tonight. Um, but January 4th is the, the, the final deadline to get in for those. And so the Tech to Elections is January um, 20th through the 22nd. Arena Academy will be February 3rd through the 7th. Um, so definitely would love to have anyone from the Blue Bonnet community uh, come to those. Um, and then on the left, on the right-hand column of this, uh, of this chart are, is just a preview of some of the other offerings that we're going to be doing in uh, 2022. So we're also going to be doing another uh, Arena Academy 201, but this one will be focused on management. And this is one that I really encourage a lot of data folks to, to attend um, because there's not a lot of uh, preparation given to people with tech or data or digital skills. Um, and I think this is really uh, an investment in the future leaders of our campaigns. And so I'm really, really excited about that. And so it'll be our second time offering this one. Um, and then we are going to be doing uh, two more arena academies, uh, one in Arizona and in Texas, which means we'll be moving from online to offline, which we were really, really thrilled about. There's nothing more exciting and thrilling about uh, Academy than doing it in person and being able to have a really strong networking component, be able to get those teams together for the simulation and have them work collaboratively in person. Um, it, is, it is truly 
um, you know, a really energizing experience. And so we're really excited to bring those to, uh, to Phoenix, Arizona, which is my hometown. Um, and then it, I think we're eyeing Austin, Texas for um, our Arena Academy um, in Texas. And that's also gonna be sort of a plus event. It's gonna be sort of a blowout. Um, Arena at its inception was known for sort of these convening events called summits. And so it's gonna be an Arena Academy plus a summit these two things haven't been announced and these are like this is a special preview for all of you so get excited and we're really thrilled and and start excited to start planning it and start to think about what it looks like to go back in person um if you have any questions you can go to arena.run academy um you can view all of our open applications um we also have some faqs if you're wondering which one is right for me um, you can find that there. And then as always, whether you are still just trying to learn about campaigns, um, or if you find yourself in the thick of it, the Arena Toolbox is a really excellent resource for you. There are guides, there are um, data tools and templates for you to, to use as a starting point. Um, not so that you can um, just kind of copy, carbon copy off the shelf, but use it as a, as a platform to innovate on. And uh, customize for your own campaign. So there's everything from a campaign plan to how to build your message to how to leverage digital tools to, um, you know, sort of uh, supporting materials on how to think about targeting. So there's a lot there, um, but really excited to always support the Blue Bonnet community and um, excited for to see what you all do and would love to have you join us at, um, at our trainings. Thank you, Santiago. Now we're passing it off to Ariana. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Adriana Soto. I'm the Deputy Director at Coding It Forward. Um, we're a nonprofit by and for young people creating new opportunities and pathways into social impact and civic technology. Um, and just thank you again, Blue Bonnet, for having me. I just wanted to spend a couple of quick minutes uh, sharing our internship opportunities with you. Uh, big, Our big Thing that we do is offer internships. And so we offer two summer internship opportunities to bring young technologists to work in local, state, and federal government. Um, and we do that through two programs, the Civic Digital Fellowship and the Civic Innovation Corps. They're basically essentially almost exactly the same program, uh, but the Civic Digital Fellowship is at the federal government level, um, and it's only open to undergraduate and graduate students due to federal hiring restrictions. And then the Civic Innovation Corps uh, students work in city and state governments across the country, um, and that is also open to boot camp and certificate grads as well. Uh, both of those programs are 10 week internships. We recruit across four project areas, data design, software engineering and product management. Um, so we're really bringing young people like all of you uh, into state and local and federal government working on high impact projects for 10 weeks. Our 2022 programs will run from June 13th to August 20th. Um, and then we found that a lot of our host office partners are staying primarily remote in 2022. So all our offerings will, most all of them will all be remote They're with the exception of a few Department of Defense partners. Um, you can find more information at our website, codingitforward.com. Um, uh, there will actually be a new website probably up by the end of the day with all of this information and more about those 2022 programs. Outside of the 10 week project that you're working on, Coding It Forward also provides mentorship and professional programming and social programming. Um, so we don't kind of just throw you into government and leave you there. We really give you the support to be successful in those 10 weeks. So um, every fellow will receive a competitive stipend, again, mentorship, professional programming, community building, um, and applications are launching on January 3rd. They're only going to be open until January 28th. Um, so if you're interested in all, would encourage you to apply early. It means that your application will be read quicker and that you'll get through our process faster. So um, we'll also be hosting info sessions, which you'll see in the bottom left corner of the slide. Uh, if you go to that link and I'll put it in the chat too, so it's easy to click on. Um, we're gonna be hosting some info sessions in the month ahead. So definitely join us there uh, if you have questions or if you wanna learn more, but thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Ariana. Jose, passing it over to you. Well, hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for uh, having us on here and giving me the opportunity to come and speak to you all today about 2022 and what we have in store. Uh, just wanted to give a little bit of context as to you know 
who Digidems is and the work that we do. Uh, so we were founded in 2018 out of a recognition that uh, campaigns need access to skilled tech talent, but oftentimes don't have the means and the resources to acquire that tech talent. And so uh, we started up with the mission of recruiting, training, and embedding skilled technologists within the most com uh, competitive federal campaigns uh, to help them win. And so, uh, our work is very similar to the work that Blue Bonnet does in that we work with uh, technologists uh, and embed them on campaigns, though the biggest difference here is in scale. Well, Blue Bonnet uh, works with a larger number of campaigns and a larger number of uh, folks within their cohorts. Uh, we focus on a more targeted number of campaigns and a smaller cohort, which allows us to bring people on uh, full time and pay them uh, full benefits and salary. And so uh, we're very happy with uh, the work that we've been able to do so far. Uh, that success has also allowed us to establish an ongoing security program uh, that works with partner committees, partner organizations, and campaigns to secure personal and work accounts, as well as to implement cybersecurity recommendations and policies from the top down. And so uh, to give a little bit more uh, of a visual aid uh, to where we've done our work, uh, we've been able to embed a total of 155 Digidems across 34 different states. Uh, in these previous two iterations of our program. And so our Digidems have been able to work on a total of 104 house campaigns, three gubernatorial 31 uh, campaigns, 31 coordinated campaigns, and then 28 Senate campaigns. Uh, and we've been very happy with the success that we've been able to get so far uh, with these two past iterations and are excited about what 2022 has in store for us. And so a little bit more on what our timeline is currently looking like uh, for 2022. Uh, right now, uh, our application, uh, we're, we're targeting to open it up sometime in Q1 of 2022. Uh, and so be sure to follow us on our social media channels uh, to, to be on the up and up for when that does open up, um, our partner, we, we will also be in touch with our partner, organiz uh, partner organizations uh, to ensure that uh, we really do spread the word far and wide about that position. Uh, interviews and hiring will go on throughout the spring with the goal of eventually bringing folks in person for an in-person training sometime in mid-June. Uh, upon that training's conclusion, folks will then go on and deploy onto their campaigns through the end of the cycle. Uh, and then following the end of the election cycle, we'll all come together for a retrospective at the end of the year uh, to kind of do a debrief and a postmortem on how the election uh, cycle, the election went. And so if you are interested in learning a little bit more about the work that we do uh, and how you can potentially fit in uh, to next year's program, please feel free to set, uh, set up an informational meeting with myself and our executive director, Kane Miller. Uh, we'd be more than happy to speak to you about uh, your potential potential for next year. And so uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, be sure to follow us on all four of our social media channels to uh, be sure that you are ready to ready to go whenever our application does open up. So very excited to be able to meet uh, a few of you potentially in the future uh, as, as you speak to us about, excuse me, about our program. And uh, thank you very much to Blue Bonnet for putting this together and for allowing us to share that today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank a special thank you to all of our guests that joined us and are sharing about these amazing opportunities. Um, so we do have a cute little holiday drink that we did share the recipe to previously. And I see that Cassandra has been slowly chipping away at her hot chocolate <laughs> throughout. So it's really good. Um, so now we'll open up the floor to any questions, comments, concerns that y'all might have because we did cover a lot of material. Um, also, I am going to drop the link to this survey for all of the Blue Bonnet Fellows to please fill out so we get to know you better and be able to serve you better. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Alrighty, questions. Um, yes, a recording will be shared in the Blue Bonnet Slack. So if you are already there or you've already received an invite to this email uh, with the link, you will be able to access it. So no worries. Oh, and you added extra protein powder to it. Can you tell me a little bit more about the champurrado texture? Yeah, it's kind of grainy, but really okay. yummy. Like it's a little bit on the thicker side. Like imagine a really rich chocolate. 
Um, so, I mean, I just experimented with it, but I actually really like it. I was hungry. So I said, let me add a little something to it. And it came out really good. Also, okay. life tip, add cinnamon to coffee, to chocolate, whatever it is. It'll make it taste amazing. Okay, yeah. So we can transition into any other last minute comments or things that our guests did want to share in terms of the importance of getting involved now, even though it's not a presidential year. I can go ahead and jump in here. Um, one thing I forgot to mention um, that I think is important. One, there, there's a registration fee for any of our trainings, but if you, we offer pretty generous scholarships. So if you need any accommodations um, when you're applying, um, you know, please flag that for us. And we want to make these trainings as accessible as possible. Um, and so um, even when we go back in person, um, we do registration uh, scholarships, even travel um, uh, scholarships as well. And so those are limited uh, basis so um, but um, want to make sure that we're supporting folks as they are starting to take that next step in their career um, and I think I you know this this upcoming election cycle is just incredibly important and the challenges in terms of the attack on voting rights I think um, is going to make the work that much more difficult for us um, and so it's really going to take Every, everyone who can get involved, getting involved and campaigns being smarter about how they use their resources, um, you know, and that might not even be enough. Um, and so uh, we really do have to push um, in this upcoming cycle. And so um, if, if you're like, oh, I can take a step back in this cycle and wait for the presidential, like really the moment is now because this is going to set the stage for whether or not we can even be successful in the 2024 cycle. Um, and so um, it is really, really important. The state legislative races are going to be critically important in terms of helping us safeguard democracy, safeguard, um, and even have the opportunity to win in 2024. And so um, the stakes are really, really high and the work of data and tech and digital folks is gonna be that, that much more important. And it's something I think everyone here on this call knows pretty well that um, these are skills that just don't often exist um, because campaigns don't have the resources, campaigns don't have the ability to hire this staff. And so um, any way that we can bring those, those skills to bear in campaigns is gonna be huge and you all can be a big part of that. I will quickly add from Coding It Forwards, and we're nonpartisan and exist regardless of what is happening uh, in elections. So products and services have to be delivered regardless of what's happening um, at any level of government. And so that's kind of the cool thing I think about, at least what we offer is the program will exist regardless of who's in office and what's going on. Um, and at the end of the day, our fellows are, are building products and services for fellow Americans and for people in this in this country. So regardless of what's happening um, at the elections and so, so important, but I think um, also making sure that people have access to services and goods is also important um, because that is the function of government. Um, so yeah, we don't really play in, we don't really have a role in um, elections as the rest of all these wonderful orgs, but um, we will exist and we exist. And uh, there are a lot of really cool offices that we're gonna have involved this coming year who have been doing really good work across um, multiple presidents now at this point. So um, yeah, we're happy to, happy to answer any questions. And again, we'll have info sessions. I know I spoke really fast. So if you're interested in more details or someone speaking a bit slower, <laughs> join us at one of the info sessions and um, there's lots of good stuff there. <laughs> I, no worries. It was, it was good. And also, yeah, I, I think it's interesting that we have so many organizations that are in the intersection of politics and the digital realm because it is pointing towards a more civically engaged generation as a whole, where we are recognizing that there has been a bit of brain drain slash talent drain when it comes to the public sector. And so it really does give me hope that we are all moving towards and pushing all at the same time. Um, Richard, I do see that you raised your hand. Thank you so much. What's up? Yeah, so I maybe maybe this was covered. Sorry if I missed it, but on coding it forward, could you repeat kind of, I know you had said that certain 
um, you need to be like a current student to apply. Um, I guess is that if you've did their rules on like, if you've recently graduated or are currently a student. Um, and yeah. then also like, if I had done like recently developed kind of additional data skills through online coursework, did that make me yeah. eligible? Or is Great it question. more like being like a student, you have to be a yeah. student? I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of all the, all the eligibility things. It'll be on our website as well. But in short, um, we're geared towards like the early career pipeline of tech into government. And so we do have some restrictions with the federal program. You have to be an undergrad or a graduate student of a two or four year institution. You can be a recent graduate, but it can't be earlier than December of 2021 for our 2022 program, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and then the state and local program, same thing, except it's also open to boot camp and certificate grads. Um, and that has to have been like a four month uh, long program at a minimum, um, just because we require a certain um, technical skill set to be able to be successful on projects. So that's kind of what it looks like. Um, if you don't fit, I, I forgot to add this in my presentation, if you don't fit the description for our internships. We also have a pretty robust jobs and internships newsletter. So if you go to our website, you can subscribe there and we share all kinds of jobs and internships that aren't our own that might fit you better. What about um, if you went to grad back to grad school kind of like later in your career after being a working professional? We don't have like age requirements or like when you went to school, you just have to fit within the academic institution eligibility requirements for that year. So okay. we've had 30 year olds and 40 year olds and people with kids who have gone to grad school later in their career and happened to be a grad student who was eligible for our programs. Okay, thanks. Um, and then can I ask a question about Arena Academy as well? Keep going. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I was just curious and sorry if I missed it because I came in the middle of when you were presenting, but um, is it mainly just training or from the training, do you provide kind of opportunities to connect people with actual campaigns? Yeah. Oh, that's a great, that's a great, um, I swear I didn't plant this question. Um, so coming out of, <laughs> coming out of Arena Academy, um, we have a pretty robust uh, post, uh, post training support where um, our main goal is not to just train, you know, uh, train folks, it is to get them placed on campaigns. And so we have a platform called Arena Careers, um, which is app.arena.run. Um, um, and um, that's like our kind of online LinkedIn uh, for campaigns. So not only can employers post jobs there, but um, folks can, um, can sort of network and connect with other folk, uh, other people in the progressive space who might be hiring. Um, also, uh, we do sort of sort of job readiness uh, coaching and uh, one on one. So uh, we'll do everything in, in terms of uh, getting you helping you get your resume ready, doing coaching, um, you know, sort of interview prep uh, with folks. Um, we also uh, are making connections and relationships with employers so that we're able to make recommendations uh, for individuals who are come who come through our academies and saying like here's somebody who's really really great um, or here's a slate of candidates um, and so making those uh, connections between employers and our trainees is something that um, our team is sort of equipped and um, it's like kind of scaling up for for the 2022 cycle and 2024 um, it's just so that we can make sure that um, again we're making those connections making sure that um, especially as people are transitioning in their career, maybe, or just getting that start, um, oftentimes need some type of validation from some outside um, group because uh, campaigns can be really insular and say, hire from who they've worked with previously or who's around. Um, and this is an opportunity through our sort of talent work um, to expand the pool um, of, of hiring for all sorts of roles on campaigns. And so um, really, really excited and proud of that work. And anyone who comes to any of our arena trainings gets access to those career services. Um, and so we'll do resume reviews. We will do um, interview preps. I did an interview prep session today with somebody who was, you know, wanted to be a campaign manager. And so 
helping them understand and uh, frame how to talk about their experience and how it translates to campaigns. And so um, it's something that our team is really, really passionate about and excited to, to do in addition to our training work. That's awesome. That's like complete covering of end-to-end -end processes. So that's absolutely so cool. Um, next up, we've got On God. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Awesome, how are you? Good, how are all of us? I don't <laughs> know, I just collectively answered, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. um, I had a question. Um, I'm currently a undergraduate student uh, pursuing my degree in computer science with like a focus in data science. And hearing like all these opportunities, like it really excites me. Um, I'm starting my fellowship in January and like I couldn't be more excited. But a lot of times, like I tell like my friends like what I'm doing, and even though like they're not studying computer science or they're not very politically oriented, they still kind of understand like the gravitas of like the situation that like the situation that we're in politically, and they ask me a lot of times like how they can get like involved at like a micro level within like their own community. Uh, this is for anyone, I guess. Like, what would be like your advice for me to tell them? Because I honestly do want to give them like a very good answer but i don't know how exactly uh, like what the answer would be so i see santiago just like gearing up body language wise to give an answer so i'm i'm gonna put you after cassandra i because cassandra i think you have a pretty good take on this um, so you'll so get two answers <laughs> <laughs> great um, i was actually typing mine so uh my biggest advice is just ask people what issues they care about because a lot of times people look at politics as you're going to go vote right whenever you vote but for example like what are things that you really care about for me one thing that i care about is access to food and that people have access to quality food right so for me something non-political that i volunteer with is the food bank because that is something that i care about and then that is also something that um, maybe that they can do, right? Like if they don't see themselves volunteering for a campaign or volunteering in politics in whatever capacity, there are issues that they can do that with. Also, um, are they part of any group? So for example, um, are like, I'm thinking, are they women in STEM? Are they LGBTQ in STEM dreamers in any, what is it called? Like any area? Um, just finding things in common with people and finding things that they can volunteer with. Um, but yeah, I would just say like start maybe asking them what issues they care about and helping them figure out like you can volunteer your skills um, with these groups. Well, I think also too, like in the fellowship and in any kind of continual volunteering and even job work that you're doing, is just like show off some of the cool things that you're doing and just like constantly bring it up that like there is something that you could be doing there is a chance to do things. I think people get really like nervous about the general state of things. And like myself coming into politics, I was like, what can I actually do? And like, there's so much to be done. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity to kind of work with people who are really high up, who have all this experience to actually build this out with you because a lot of people are willing for that. So I think, yeah, just uplift the work that you're doing constantly um, and try to get them to kind of maybe work them through like the series of engagement, the ladder and engagement a bit, but uh, yeah. So Derek's advice summarized was brag about yourself. I, yep. I think that was, yep. that was pretty clear, yeah. I was shortly going to add, I feel like politics is more than like the three topics that get covered in the news every day. Like being an active member of your community can also be a part of that. So I think like Cassandra, like you hit the, like what is it that your friends are really interested in? Like, and how can they like maybe volunteer their time? I'm a really big geek about like the the social fabric of politics and like how like lower level community engagement can shape like the way things play out on a national level. So that's my two cents, but. Yeah, and I think building on all of those is like, um, there is like a hidden nature of the campaign work that like, people often think of like the candidate first, they will think of running for office like as the, or just voting on election day as the being the way that they can, they can engage. And, um, you know, I think to some of the points that have already been said, the more you can talk about it, um, but then also like just find opportunities for folks to to join you in the work. Um, when I was first starting to volunteer, um, I was super nervous to go canvas. I didn't even know, like I walked into an office and I didn't even quite know what they were, anybody was going to be doing. I thought I'd be 
put to work writing speeches immediately or something, um, you know, and uh, I was really nervous about it. Um, and, but some of my friends also were really interested in getting engaged and were, uh, were all, all concerned about, um, you know, different issues. And finally, we were just like, let's go together. And we went canvassing and like, we started to just get involved and, you know, bringing folks along with you into your work and, and using your relationships with people is like, is the number one way to start to get people in that, into that entry point in that ladder of engagement. Um, and they might spin off and do other really cool stuff and be engaged in other ways in their community. But, um, you know, you, you as a catalyst for that, I think is really important. And, um, you know, it's always, it's always easier to do something when you, when you have a friend with you. Um, so. Josue, any other words of wisdom to add? Sorry, I just put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, 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 all good. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, to, to, to echo a bit of what, what has already been mentioned, yeah, I can oftentimes feel that at the national level, things are, are very difficult to get involved in and like to actually start making an impact and a difference in. Uh, but yeah, when, once you start involving yourself at the local level, you start seeing that really there is a lot that you can impact there. Uh, and so, you know, much like Santiago said, uh, doing it with friends and, and volunteering together is something that really does uh, bring out uh, great memories and brings out the best in people sometimes as well. And so um, it's something, it's a process that you can embark in together uh, and you don't have to feel that onus of how do I engage the, you know, my, my group of friends. Eventually they'll end up coming up with, you know, their own avenues of engagement uh, just by being exposed to it. And so, um, you know, I, I think that everyone has shared and imparted uh, a great deal of wisdom uh, for that so far. So, yeah. Thank you.